Welcome to this Algebra 2 session on solving polynomial equations. We're going to use the zero product property as we solve these equations. So definition. Um, the zero product property states that if a product of two factors is zero, then at least one of the factors must be zero, which makes sense. Um, 3 times 0 is equal to 0 because one of those factors is 0. Um, so if you think about the, pro the property, it does make a lot of sense. You can see an example here. If, in general, if a times b is equal to 0, then either a or b would have to be 0, or they both could be. So let's take a look at how we use the property. Solve two quantity 2a plus 5 times quantity a minus 6 equal to 0. So we need to solve that. So what we do, according to the zero product property, is that if two quantities are equal to 0, then one or both of them are equal to 0. So in order, what we're looking for is what value of a in this quantity will make it 0, and what value of a in this quantity will make it 0. So what do I, what number can I subtract 6 from and get 0? What number can I multiply by 2 and add 5 and get 0? So this one you can probably look at pretty quickly and decide what the answer is. Um, this one may be a little bit harder for you to do, but any time that you're not sure and you can't tell from looking at it, you can set up two equations, 2a plus 5 equal to 0, and then a minus 6 equal to 0. And you just solve both for a. Let me write over here. We're going to solve for a. So solving the first one for a, I have to subtract 5 from both sides. And that gives me 2a equal to negative 5. Divide both sides by 2, and we get a equal to negative 5 over 2. Same thing for this one. Add 6 to both sides. So we're solving for a, so we're going to add 6, and we get a equal to positive 6. So you can check your answers quickly by substituting 6 in for a and see if you get 0, and substituting negative 5 over 2 in for a and see if you get 0. So these are our two answers here. that will give us 0 when we substitute them into those quantities. Now, you may start with something that looks like this, which is an equation. You do not have two quantities multiplying each other. In order to use the zero product property, you have to have thing, a product. So, what we need to do is we need to solve this, and we need to get it into a product. And the way that we do that is by factoring. So in order to start the problem, I'm going to have to have everything on one side of the equation first. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, and I'll get x squared plus x minus 20 equals to 0. So before you can start using the zero product property, one, everything has to be on the same side and equal to zero. So you have to have zero on one side of your equation. Two, you have to have a product. If you don't have a product, you have to look at factoring what you do have. So that's going to be our next step is to factor this. This is a trinomial, and we talked about how to factor this before. We are looking for factors of negative 20 that when we combine them, we get a positive 1, because there is a 1 in front of the middle term. So two numbers that I can multiply together, that will give me negative 20, but when I add them together, I get a positive 1. And that would be positive 5 and negative 4. So when I fill into my parentheses here for factoring, it will be x plus 5 and x minus 4, because 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, 5 plus negative 4 is the 1 that I'm looking for. So now I use my zero product property, and I set each quantity equal to 0, or I can look at each quantity and decide what value of x will make it 0. 
So subtract 5 from both sides to solve for x. And I get x equal to negative 5. Add 4 on the right. And that will give me x equal to positive 4. So my answer is x can be equal to negative 5 or x can be equal to 4. So we are going to look at one more today. And this is going to involve greatest common factor. I also want to point out that sometimes you'll see the answers written in braces. So you may also see your answers written with the braces. 16, oh actually we have two more. 16a squared minus 25 equals to 0. We're going to solve this. We do not have a product. So what we need to do is we need to factor it. Everything is on one side equal to 0, so we don't have to do anything as far as that goes, but we do need to factor it. This is the difference of perfect squares. So, as we talked about, a difference of perfect squares factors into <coughs> the two perfect squares with plus and minus. So we'll have 4a and 4a, and the factors of 25 are 5 and 5, and you have a plus and minus or minus and plus. So now we can use our zero product property and set each one equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And that gives me 4a equal to negative 5. Divide both sides by 4. And I get a equal to negative 5 fourths. Add 5 to both sides for the one on the right, and I get 4a equal to 5. Divide both sides by 4, and I get a equal to 5 fourths. So those are my two answers, and again, you may see them written with braces. Negative 5 fourths and 5 fourths. Now we'll take a look at our last problem. 15a squared minus 27a equal to 0. So I have to look at factoring this problem. And any time you start a factoring problem, you are supposed to look for a greatest common factor. So <clears throat> when I look at this one, it does have a greatest common factor. And it is 3a. So I need to pull the greatest common factor out. And I'll have 3a times 5a minus 9 equal to 0. And you can see that I do have a product now. And I will take each one and set it equal to 0. So I can set the 3a equal to 0 and the 5a minus 9 equal to 0. And I will solve each, divide both sides by 3, and we get a equal to 0. Add 9 to both sides, and we get 5a equal to 9. So I need to divide both sides by 5 to finish up the problem, and I get a equal to 9 fifths. So my two answers are 0 and 9 fifths. And that ends this session on solving polynomial equations.